can come on back in, brothers and sisters. This thing, I'm, I just don't understand. It's like when I get into the just of it, it shuts off. Nothing be wrong with the phone. Don't nothing, no, the battery don't be going down or nothing. Come on back in, brothers and sisters, so we can we can finish this off. That'd be crazy. The devil know what I'm about to drop on y'all. That's why stuff like that keep happening. But I cannot let it discourage me to put this information out for y'all. So let us let's continue. Now I I where I stopped off at, brothers and sisters, is I stopped I start I stopped off at what Paul was saying, brothers and sisters, right? So we're going to see if Paul agrees with the people that try to use his letters to say that the law was done away with and we're dealing with the Sabbath, right? So uh, Acts, the 24th chapter, and we're going to start at verse uh, 14. Acts, the 24th chapter, praise, praise the Lord, praise God, brother. Acts 24, and we're going to start at verse 14. Acts 24, and we are going to start at verse 14. We're going to read one verse, brothers and sisters. Verse 14. Acts 24 and verse 14. And verse 14 reads, But this I confess unto you, or this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, Believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. You know what's crazy about him saying this, brothers and sisters? Because the Jew, and for people to say that, use his letters to say that the law is done away with, is because the Jews were always accusing him of doing stuff like this, right? They were accusing him of not preaching the, the, the Torah. That's what he kept getting um and having friction with them about, brothers and sisters. But his response was that he uh, worships the God of his fathers, believing in all things, all things that are written in the law and in the prophets. You see that law and the prophets keep coming up? What's in the law and the prophets, brothers and sisters? The Sabbath day, right? The sign that shows us that we are the people of the God of Israel, that shows that he or that we know that he is the Lord. So Paul said, I worship, I mean, Paul said, I believe in all things that are written in the law and the prophets, not, not small things, brothers and sisters, not half of the book, right? And there was no new, uh, uh, new Testament, even in his day, we can't prove there was a new Testament, right? So all they all had was the scriptures, brothers and sisters. That's all they all had. So he said, I believe in all things written in the law and in the prophets, right? So this is Acts, the 24th chapter. Watch this, brothers and sisters. When did they become, when were they first called Christians? He said he believes in all things that are written in the law and the prophets. So when did they become Christians or when were they called Christians? Let's go to Acts, the 11th chapter. We're going back. From what, uh, from him saying this, brothers and sisters, we're going back to Acts the 11th chapter. Remember, he didn't already said that he believes all things that are written in the law and the prophets. He was a Christian, wasn't he? He believes in all things. He followed Christ that said he came to fulfill the law of the prophets. Paul ended up writing in Romans that they, uh, they came to establish the law. So they came to establish the law as who? Acts the 11th chapter. And we are going to start at verse 19. Acts the 11th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 19. Acts 11 and verse 19. 11 and 19. And verse 19 reads, Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen tra uh, traveled, or travailed as far as Phineas and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but the Jews only, right? Oh, my goodness. So it said, it said that they were preaching to nobody but the Jews only at this time, brothers and sisters, right? Now, like I said, Paul already said 
in um um in Acts the twenty fourth chapter, he had said that he believes in all things written in the law and the prophets. That was after this. And I'm going to make my point in a minute, right? So one of the points is they were preaching to none but the Jews only, right? Believing all things that are written in the law and in the prophets. But what were they doing this as, brothers and sisters, right? Let's continue. Verse 20. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and, uh, and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, right? Who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord, right? So much people, which was the Jews only at this time, brothers and sisters, were added unto the Lord, right? Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. Now they were with each other for a whole year, brothers and sisters, right? And they were preaching to none but the Jews only. Remember, they say this is just like the, uh, the, the high Sabbath. They say that's the Jews' feast. Um, <clears throat> they say that's the Jews' feast. They, they say that the laws were for the Jews only, right? But here it is saying that they were preaching to none but the Jews only, like I said, at this time. But what were they called at this time, brothers and sisters? Verse 20, uh, middle of the verse 26. Matter of fact, I'm going to read verse 26 over. And when, he, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and he came... And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So a Christian, according to Paul, because Paul was there with them, assembling for a whole year before they were called this. Paul said, I believe in all things that uh, are written in the law of the prophets. Paul said we came to establish the law. So that as a Christian, you are supposed to believe in all things written in the law and the prophets. As a Christian, you're supposed to believe in establishing the law, right? As a Christian, you're supposed to believe in keeping the commandments and teaching others to keep the commandments, brothers and sisters. That was the purpose of this, right? As a Christian. And once again, at this time, when they were called Christian, they were preaching to none but the Jews only. So is being a Christian a Jew thing? Do you see what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? Is being a Christian only for the Jews? You can't even claim that you're a Christian if you're not a Jew, if you don't keep the law and have that Sunday doctrine mentality. You can't even be a Christian. Y'all see how deep this goes? And once again, we're, we're still dealing with the Sabbath day. But once again, brothers and sisters, if you are not, if you think that the Sabbath is for the Jews only, you think that being a Christian is for the Jews only. Because when they called them Christians first, they were preaching to nothing but the Jews only, brothers and sisters. So that's the point we're, we're, we're going to make here, right? So you got to believe in keeping the Torah and following Christ, the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus Christ. You can't just have the faith in Christ, right? That doesn't, you're not going to be able to do that, right? So now let us continue. Let's go to Acts the 13th chapter. We're going to get back into the Sabbath. I told y'all I want to, I'm building this up for y'all so y'all can see what, um, what we're going to put on display today. Um, Acts the 13th chapter, and we are going to start at verse 13. Acts the 13th chapter, and we are going to start at verse 13. Acts 13 and verse 13. 
Acts 13 and verse 13. And verse 13 reads, Now when Paul and his company loosed from Patmos, they came to Perga in Paphilia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. Right? So even the disciples were going into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, brothers and sisters. Were they going in the synagogue to teach people not to keep the Sabbath day after everything that we just read? No, we know what they weren't doing that. They were going in there to pre preach the Lord Jesus, just like uh, what was going on in um, when they were in Antioch. They went to the Jews preaching the Lord Jesus. That was what they were doing, brothers and sisters. Right? Verse 15. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear of God, give audience. So now, y'all can read the rest of, uh, on your own. I want, I'm going to point out something here. If you read the rest, you're not going to once find these brothers going in, in the synagogue telling them that they don't have to keep the law and the prophets. Do y'all understand that if that was in this book, if that was actually the case, in Acts the 13th chapter, you would have seen them preaching, let's stop keeping the laws because Christ died for us. Christ is already dead, brothers and sisters, right? So if Christ's death was the um, was the destroying or the fulfilling, as they say, of the law and the prophets, brothers and sisters, then they would have went in there and told them not to keep the law and the prophets, right? And they would have told them, hey, let's, look, I know y'all keeping y'all Sabbath day or whatever, we're keeping this Sabbath day, but let's let's try again tomorrow, right? On, the, on Sunday, right? Let's try again tomorrow, right? But they didn't say that. Now let's go, let's skip down to verse 42. Verse 42. And verse 42 reads, And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath day. Now, why wouldn't they uh, uh, expect for the, uh, for the word to be preached to them the next day? Not the next Sabbath day, brothers and sisters, but the next day, because they did not go to church on Sunday. They did not do these things, brothers and sisters. We're going to show y'all that sun worship was going on on Sunday and that they mixed sun worship or paganism with Christianity and merged it together. They polluted it, brothers and sisters. That's what they did, right? So verse 42, and when, um, yeah, verse 43, I'm sorry. And when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came the, almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. So we know, even after Christ's death, they were keeping the Sabbath day, brothers and sisters. Even after Christ's death. Now, people like to go to Acts, the 20th chapter, verse 7, to say because they were breaking bread on the first day of the week, that means that they changed the Sabbath day. That's Acts, the 20th chapter, right, in verse 7. But in Acts, the 24th chapter, Paul comes back to say, I believe in all things that, uh, uh, that are written in the Law of the Prophets. So you know that's, that's, that has nothing to do with them changing the Sabbath day. So... It said that the Gentiles came to hear the word of God the next Sabbath day, right, brothers and sisters? Who are the ones that changed the Sabbath day? Because at this point in time, the Gentiles know about the Sabbath day and they're following the Jews and, and, and worshiping the God of Israel through the Jews on the Sabbath day, right? Through Israel on the Sabbath day. But who changed? the Sabbath day to what we know it as it is now, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Daniel. Let's go to Daniel, the seventh chapter. Daniel, the seventh chapter. 
Daniel, the seventh chapter, and we're going to start at verse 23. <clears throat> Daniel, the seventh chapter, and we are going to start at verse 23. Now, brothers and sisters, you can go to Zechariah, the first chapter, and it will talk about the four horns of the Gentiles, right? This four horn of the Gentiles is Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome, right? The first beast to the fourth beast. What we're going to do is we are going to see, we're going to start talking about the fourth beast, which is Rome. And Rome is the one that changed the Sabbath day into Sunday, brothers and sisters. But we're going to hear quotes from the cardinals and everything on what they did and what their mindset and process was when they did it, brothers and sisters. And you're going to see how the Sabbath day changed. Now, we are showing that even after Christ died, long after Christ died, they were keeping the Sabbath day, brothers and sisters. So now we know we, we don't have any uh, confusion about if it's in the Bible or not. It's not in the Bible that they changed the Sabbath day after Christ died, right? So let's, let's get into this. Uh, Daniel, the seventh chapter, and we're going to start at verse 23. Daniel 7 and verse 23. Daniel 7 and verse 23. And verse 23 reads, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon, the, uh, upon earth. This is the Roman beast, brothers and sisters, right? You can read all of Daniel, the seventh chapter, and it will, it, well, you can read Daniel, period, and it will explain that the four, four horn of the Gentiles or the four beasts that came uh, up out of the earth were the, excuse me, were the Babylonians, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. But we're dealing with the fourth beast, which is Rome. So it says that this is the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the 10 horns out of this kingdom are 10 kings that shall arise and another shall arise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings. So you got the 10 horns, which is the, um, the rise and fall of the Roman Empire 10 times, brothers and sisters. And we're coming up to the 10th time now, brothers and sisters, right? Then you, um, then it says that, um, then it says that another king shall arise out of these. We're talking, we're getting to talking about the Pope, right? Because he's the spiritual king, right? He's also called the little horn, the little horn. And he subdued three kings, which was the Hirali, the Ostrogoths, and the Vandals. These were the three, uh, uh, these were some of the uh, barbarian tribes, three of the barbarian tribes that went to war with the Roman Empire, right? So that's who you're dealing with, right? So let, it, let us see what it says that this beast or this king was going to do, right? Verse 25, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and, to, and think to change times and and laws, brothers and sisters. So we're getting into the point where the Roman beast, through this king, which is the Pope, brothers and sisters, is going to think to change times and laws. That is how we got this different mentality of the law was done away with. Now we're celebrating the Christmas, the Easter's, the Thanksgivings, all of all of that, brothers and sisters, instead of the holy days and feast days. Why? Because we're under the Roman. Roman head, brothers and sisters, the Roman spirituality, the Roman decree, right? The, the Constantine creed. That's what we're under right now, brothers and sisters, right? And he said, he shall speak great words against the most high and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand unto a time, times, and a dividing of times. And this is going all the way down to the great tribulation, which is three and a half years, the last three and a half years of the Gentile dynasty, right? So, brothers and sisters, now we're going to get into the proof that this, that history is backing this up, right? That that king, which is the Pope, did, thought to change times and laws. He, he's already done it, and we're going to see what happened, brothers and sisters, right? So remember, we're dealing with the Roman. We're dealing with the Roman head, right? 
So, hold on one minute. Get this straight. Okay, cool. Now this is from the source is from www.cgi.org. Who del who changed the Sabbath to Sunday, brothers and sisters? That is what we're dealing with, right? Sorry. Okay. So it says, when Emperor Constantine, a pagan sun worshiper, right? So we're dealing with Constantine first came to power in A.D. 313, he legalized Christianity and made the first Sunday-keeping law. So it was Constantine in 313 A.D., brothers and sisters, not the Bible. It was Constantine, right? In 313 A.D., uh, and this is, in, and you can see it in his creed, the Constantine creed, and he went to detail about not keeping the Jews um, customs, right? He went into great detail. Um, so he said uh, 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 he made the first Sunday keeping law. His infamous Sunday enforcement law of March 7th, 8321 reads as follows. On the vulnerable day of the sun, let the ma magistrates and people reading in the cities, reading in cities rest and let all workshops be closed, right? Now, that's funny because the people that live in America not even following that. He said, let all workshops be closed, but they got y'all out here working on Sunday. That That's supposed to be, hold on, that's supposed to be y'all Sabbath day, right? Constantine wrote in the law that you were supposed to close all workshops, brothers and sisters. So they still got y'all out here bogus on the fake Sabbath day. Still, it's not even in its original state because at least it would have made sense to follow the Sabbath day like it was in here on the wrong day. But they, they don't even have y'all doing that. It's just total pollution of the Sabbath day on the wrong day, right? And that's insult. That, that should really insult your intelligence, brothers and sisters. It really should, right? So this is from the Codex Justinius. Uh, 312 3 Trans, Philip Scoff, History of the Christian Church, 5th edition, New York, 1902, uh, 330, uh, 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 3, 380, note 1. Right? So that is the source for that on this, um, on this website. Once again, the website is www.cgi.org. Who changed the Sabbath to Sunday? And it has the sources of where these quotes are coming from, right? So we see that this is what Constantine said, right? Let's go to the next one. The next one reads, the Sunday law was officially confirmed by the Roman papacy, right? So Constantine made it a law, but it was really officially made by the Roman papacy. It was, it was, it was filtered through the society, right? But Constantine is the one that created the law. I just wanted to point that out. It says the Council of Laodicea in AD 364 decreed Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, but shall work on that day. This, <laughs> this is from the Roman papacy, brothers and sisters. We're going to get the source in a minute. But this is from the Roman papacy telling you to work on the Sabbath day. That's why you have no regard for it. Because the Romans are the ones that told you it's okay to work on it, right? But then they shut down all the workshops on Sunday, according to the same law, brothers and sisters, right? And it says Christians shall not Judaize, uh, or shall not Judaize or be idle on the Sabbath day. So this is also where you get this whole uh, phrase and mentality that this is the Jews' feast, or this is the Jews' Sabbath, or this is the Jews' law. You got that from the Nicene, the, the Nicene, it's called the Nicene Creed or the Constantine Creed. That's where you got it from, brothers and sisters. You did not get it from the Bible. You did not get it from the Bible, right? Let us continue. It says, you shall work on that day, but the Lord's day they shall especially honor and as being Christians? I mean, that is... <laughs> They said as being Christians, I'm sorry, 
as being Christians, but I thought we read in here when they were preaching to none but the Jews only, and that they were first called Christians in Antioch, that they were acknowledging that you have to keep the law and the prophets, brothers and sisters, right? Paul was a Christian. They called Paul a Christian. He was accused of not teaching the Torah. That's why he had so much friction, and he had to defend himself by saying, but I keep all things that are written in the law and in the prophets. That's why he said that, brothers and sisters, right? But now we're seeing... Starting in 313 AD, hundreds of years after this, brothers and sisters, now you got the Sunday law. Now you got the mentality of it being the Sabbath day, you working on that day. And then further back than that, 364 AD, it says that you shall work on Saturday. They're giving you, they're giving you permission to work on the Sabbath day being Christians. So that meant that mentality of Sunday worship, brothers and sisters, and not going to church on the Sabbath day, having a holy convocation on the Sabbath day, it didn't even start till 313 AD, brothers and sisters. That, it didn't start till 313, the third, the fourth century, that's the fourth century AD, brothers and sisters. It didn't start till then. That means all that time, nobody changed the Sabbath day until the Romans uh, accepted it under Roman Emperor Constantine, right? So let's continue. Um, sh uh, 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 as being Christians shall, if possible, do no work on that day. If possible, right? That means, okay, you know, if you can possibly do it, don't work on that day. No, Lord God said, if you work on that day, you're going to die. <laughs> like, period. Ain't no if possible. It better be possible, right? If, you get, if your life getting threatened, you're going to find all the possibilities in the world to do what you got to do, brothers and sisters, to save your life, right? Um, let's keep going. If, however, they are found Judaizing, they shall be shut out from Christ. So if you're keeping the law and the prophets according to the Roman papacy, brothers and sisters, you shall be shut out from Christ. That is where you get this mentality from, brothers and sisters. Right, but that that ain't it, right? That ain't it. Let's keep going. Now, uh, I'm sorry. The source for that was um, Strand Op, citing Charles J. Uh, Hiffel, the History of the Councils of the Church, two, uh, by uh, Edwin Berg, nine, 1876, page three sixteen, brothers. And sisters, right. So we we're seeing how this thing is being broken down. Let's go to the next one. The next one says Cardinal Gibbons in the uh, in the faith of our fathers, the 92nd edition, page 89, freely admits. Now, brothers and sisters, you see I'm naming these sources, right? This is where this stuff is coming from, right? He said he freely admits you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. This is the cardinal at the Catholic Church admitting this. The cardinal, brothers and sisters, y'all probably seen the video of him, the brother in the little colorful, I think he had black on, but he had some little colorful things going on. He is the one that says that there is, you can't read in the Bible from Genesis to Revelations, and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we, the Catholic Church, never sanctified. They said they never sanctified the Sabbath day. They sanctified what? The Sunday Sabbath day. The Sunday rest. That's what they sanctified. But who sanctified the seventh day, brothers and sisters? The God of Israel sanctified the seventh day. Right? So we got... We got the timeline we see in here. Once again, I'm going to reiterate this, that when we get to Acts, long after Christ died, they were still keeping the Sabbath day. We see that we don't have no evidence of the changing of the Sabbath day until 313 AD, brothers and sisters. That's when the Sabbath day changed, right? Not Acts 20 and 7. It was 313 AD. That's when the, uh, uh, the Sabbath day changed. So now let us continue. Uh, again, the Catholic Church, by virtue of her divine mission, changed the day from Saturday to Sunday, the Catholic mirror, 
official publication of James Cardinal Gibbons, September 23rd, 1893. 1893, he said this. 1893, brothers and sisters. So they've been admitted this. They've been admitted that the uh, the sanctification of Sunday had nothing to do with the Bible, brothers and sisters. The cardinals at the co uh, Catholic Church are saying this, right? The cardinals, all they are admitting this is in these history books, brothers and sisters, right? Let us continue. Um, Protestants, Protestants do not realize that by observing Sunday, they accept the authority of the spokesperson of the church, the Pope. Right. And Protestant means to protest. If you were being a Protestant, you were pro protesting the infallibility of the Pope. But you kept his day. <laughs> it's like you kept all the customs that came with him. So the only thing you did was question the Pope. You didn't question the doctrine that came with the Pope. Right. So the, you weren't really protesting the, the really important things, brothers and sisters. Right. Um, that's from our Sunday visitor, uh, February 5th, 1950, right? It said, and then let's keep going. And of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change Saturday Sabbath to Sunday was her act. They said, they admitted that, that it was the act of the Catholic Church. And the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical authority and religious things. And this comes from H.F. Thomas chancellor of the cardinal uh, chancellor of cardinal gibbons right let us keep going the catholic church claims that the church is above the bible right <laughs> the church is above the bible and this transference of sabbath observance is proof of that fact Catholic Record of London, Ontario, September 1st, 1923. Y'all see why I said that you can prove the God of Israel exists through his prophecy and seeing the history from them? They're the ones that changed the Sabbath day in 313 AD, brothers and sisters, right? But the God of Israel prophesied that the that 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 king that came from the fourth beast that was different than all the other kings, the one that took out the, the subdued the three kings, which is the Hirali, the Ostrogoth, and the Vandals, the barbarian tribes, he is the one that changed times and laws. And it's in the history, brothers and sisters. He started doing that in 364 AD. Prophecy fulfilled. Right? You can prove this stuff. Easily, I mean, easily, brothers and sisters, right? So, um, let us keep going. Let's go down to the bottom. <clears throat> so, this is from Thomas Enright, C CSSR President, Redemption, uh, Redemptionist College, Roman Catholic, Kansas City, Missouri, February 18, eight, uh, 1884. This is a quote from him. Right, and these guys are part of the Catholic Church, brothers and sisters. Right, so th th there ain't no, sh there ain't no going around this. There really ain't no going around this. He said, "Prove to me from the Bible alone that I am bound to keep Sunday holy. There is no such law in the Bible. It is a law of the Catholic Church alone. The Catholic Church says." By my divine power, I abolished the Sabbath day and commanded you to keep holy the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church, brothers and sisters. They bow down to the Holy Catholic Church, brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, I'm going to add this on, right? Let's go to Revelations, the 13th chapter. Right? And then we're going to read one more history thing, and then we're done. I just had to add this on, just because I read that. Revelations 13. Revelations, the 13th chapter, and we are going to start at verse 1. Revelations, the 13th chapter, and we are going to start at verse 1. Revelations 13 and verse 1. 
And verse 1 reads, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his head ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So this is still dealing with the Gentile nations, brothers and sisters, right? you got the seven heads, which once again, you got Babylon, Medo-Persia, you have Greece, but Alexander the Great died and his generals took over, his four generals took over. So you got that, uh, uh, I'm sorry, you got that, which is six, and then Rome. So that's the seven heads, and then you have the ten, I mean the seven, yeah, that's the seven heads, and then you got the ten, which is when we talked about the rise and fall of the Roman Empire ten times, the ten horns, right? Going back to the ten kings, in um, 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 Daniel, the seventh chapter, right? And he had 10 crowns and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy, brothers and sisters, the name of blasphemy, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority, right? So once again, we're still talking about the beast and then we'll get in and talking about the false prophet, which is the Pope, brothers and sisters, right? But the dragon gave this beast and this false prophet great authority. That's where they, the Pope got his authority from, the devil, to change Sunday, I mean, to change the Sabbath day, Saturday to Sunday. Don't that seem like you getting your power from the devil, brothers and sisters, right? Um, let us continue. Verse 3, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. <clears throat> Excuse me. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with them? So they worshiped the beast and the dragon, and they wondered after the beast. What does it say? Um, 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 what does it say? In, uh, what did it say as far as uh, the quote that came from these cardinals? It said <clears throat> that, um, I'm sorry, let me find the place where it was. Oh, here it is. It says, and lo, the entire civilized world bows down to the reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church, brothers and sisters. That's them wandering after the beast and worshiping dragon, brothers and sisters. That's what that is, brothers and sisters. So the Bible and the history, even these are quotes. These are quotes from these folks. It's matching the scriptures, brothers and sisters. It is matching the scriptures. So we got to stop saying that this is the white. You think the white man go write this and it had that? That, that doesn't make any sense, brothers and sisters. This is, this is us. This is us, our people, exposing through the uh, spirit of God, exposing all the wickedness in the world. This is not the white man's book, brothers and sisters. They changed it. They're the ones that changed this until what we see today. This is the white man's, the Catholicism. That's the white man's religion, brothers and sisters, right? The Romans' religion, right? So, once again, we are seeing this uh, unfold right before our eyes, brothers and sisters, right? They have changed the Sabbath day from, Sunday, from Saturday, the seventh day, to Sunday, the first day, brothers and sisters. Let me see if that's it. Um, no, we got one more. So, another quote, it says that the Pope has the power to change times to abrogate laws. Doesn't that match Daniel, the seventh chapter, right? And to dispense with all things, even the precepts of Christ, right? Because he's also called the vicar of Christ or the replacement of Christ. That's what his title is, brothers and sisters. It says the Pope has the authority and has often exercised it to dispense with the commandment of Christ. Who gave him that power, brothers and sisters? The dragon did. The dragon did, right? Now, let's go to the last place, the last historical place. And this is actually from 
the Catholic Encyclopedia. See, I'm going to go to their stuff and read y'all from what they are saying, brothers and sisters, so we won't have any confusion or and any uh and any um trying to get out of this stuff, right? We're going to go to their sources so they can say it, right? <clears throat> so remember when I told y'all when I read the first um the first scripture that we came out of the house of bondage or the land of Egypt, right? Which was the house of bondage. Y'all see, this is bondage. This is spiritual bondage, right? So we're going to read now about Sunday. This is the last thing we're going to do. Sunday. This, um, this is, uh, the source for this is from www.newevent.org. And this is dealing with the Catholic Encyclopedia, brothers and sisters, the if you go onto this website, and I will put I will put everything. I, I just noticed a brother said that, but I will put everything on the um, in the uh, comment section. I will put all the things in the comment section. So let us get to this last place, brother sisters. It says Sunday, the day of the sun, as the name of the first day of the week. So we don't have this. The first day of the week. I know people got the calendar systems. Some of them say Sunday is the seventh, and they say Monday is the first day of the week. But we're coming from the, the Catholic Encyclopedia, right? So it says that it is the first day of the week. It says it is derived from Egyptian astrology. Y'all see that? It is derived from Egyptian astrology. So the source of this, brothers and sisters, is still Egypt, bondage. Going all the way back to Egypt and then going further back to Babylon, right? Which is why the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, is called Babylon the Great. Mystery Babylon the Great, right? <clears throat> but the Sunday goes all the way back to the calendar system and the astrology of the Egyptians, right? Um, it says the seven planets known as known to us as Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, and the Moon. This is how you also know that Sunday is the first day of the week because the Sun comes before all the rest of the planets up until Saturn, brothers and sisters. This is where they get that from, right? This is where you get the days of the week from, from the Sun, from the sun to the planet Saturn. That's where you get the days of the week from. Um, so let us continue. Um, so it says Mercury and the moon each had an hour of the day assigned to them and the planet which was uh, regent during the first hour of any day of the week gave its name to that day. During the first and second century, yeah, during the first and second century, the week of the seven days was introduced into Rome from Egypt. Y'all see that? It was introduced uh, into Rome from Egypt and the Roman names of the planets were given to each successive day. The Teutonic nations seem to have adopted the week as a division of time from the Romans, but they changed the Roman names into those of corresponding Teutonic deities. Hence, the, the Dia Sol, which is a deity, brothers and sisters, became Sunday. And it means the day of the unconquered sun, right? So that is where you got Sunday worship. That is why they put them together with Christianity because they were still sun worshipers, brothers and sisters. It is the day of the unconquered sun. That's why they put it on that day. Um, let's continue. It says Sunday was the first day of the week according to the Jewish method of reckoning. But for Christians, it began to take the place of the Jewish Sabbath in apo apo uh, uh, apo apostolic times, I'm sorry, as the day set apart for the public and solemn worship of God. The practice of meeting together on the first day of the week for the celebration of the eucentric, uh, 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 yeah, you sent, you, Eucharist, I'm sorry, you, Eucharistic, Sacrifice is indicated in Acts 20 and 7. That's and that's where they get it from, right? But if you go to Acts, matter of fact, let's go to Acts 20 and 7. Let's go to Acts 20 and 7 so that we can see this thing all the way around. 
right? Acts 20 and 7. Acts 20 and verse 7. We're almost done, brothers and sisters. Acts 20 and verse 7. Acts 20 and verse 7. Now remember, remember when I showed y'all, brothers and sisters, you can go to Acts 24 chapter where Paul says, I, uh, uh, I believe all things that are written in the law and the prophets. So he's not about to change to no Sunday law. We also showed that there was no thought process of the Sabbath changing to Sunday until 313 AD. So you know that this is not talking about that. But let's read it. Acts 20 and verse 7. <clears throat> it says, and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow and continue his uh, and continued his speech until midnight. What that got to do with a Sabbath day, brothers and sisters? I'm just showing y'all what people will use, right? If you're dealing with Sunday Christian, if they think they know a little scripture, they're going to go to Acts 20 and 7 to say, well, they the, 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 uh, the Sunday was uh, Saturday was changed to Sunday because on the first day of the week, they came together breaking bread. You can break bread in any day of the week. They just happen to do it on the first day, brothers and sisters. That don't make the Sabbath day Sunday, right? And as we saw with all of this, we're showing you where all this stuff come from. Once again, they didn't have no no mentality of the Sabbath day changing from Saturday to Sunday until 313 AD, brothers and sisters. And it didn't really get pushed out into the world until 364 AD. This ain't that. Okay, so just don't let people get around that, brothers and sisters. You stick it to them, right? You show them their errors and try to get them to, to correct their errors. If they don't, just dust, dust your shoulders off, right? Dust your feet off and move on, brother and sisters, right? So that is where they think they got it from, brother and sisters. They also, I'm not going to read this part, but they also try to use 1 Corinthians 16 and 2 and Revelations uh, 1 and 10. And then it says it is called the Lord's Day, right? It is called the Lord's Day, which is the uh, the day of the unconquered sun, brother and sisters. They're worshiping the sun and got you thinking that they worshiping Christ or they following Christ. And that is not the case because Christ said he um, he follows the laws uh, and the prophets. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Paul said he believed all things that was written in the law and the prophets. Paul said he came to establish the law. Christ said he came to fulfill the law. It's synonymous, brothers and sisters. Right. And we know that the nation of Israel hid their eyes from their Sabbath. That's why the rest of the world forgot about it. And then the Romans picked it up and then they changed everything. And that's what you have today, brothers and sisters. Right. That's what you have today. Now, once again, I'm going to put these sources in the comment section and um, I'm even going to put the excerpts with everything. I'm going to put it in the comment section so y'all can um, review it and go through it. Once again, my name is Cassius Israel. I really hope y'all was edified today. Once again, this is the, one of the simplest things to break down, but it's very, very detailed in how things got the way it is now. And that's what we wanted to go over today, brothers and sisters. So once again, I'm Cassius Israel, Shazak Ben Yehuda. I represent the Walls of Jericho, Biblical and Historical Studies, Hebrews in the Hood Entertainment. And I thank you for your time and shalom.